eBay sellers, it's Suzanne A. Wells. A fun little intro there to wake you up and get you in a good mood to watch this video full of amazing sales by amazing sellers just like you. Before I get started, I wanted to let you know this is kind of an experiment. Normally I only do one supersize sales video a month but I get a lot of requests to do them more often. So you can see this is a history of my supersize sales videos over the last few months. They do get a lot of views and a lot of likes. So I'm curious if I do them more often, will that carry over? So if you like these videos and you want more of them, the best way you can make sure that happens is watch the video in its entirety and give it a like. Then I will know by the analytics if I should make more of them or not. And the sales in this video are taken from my Facebook group. The link is below the video if you'd like to participate. Thank you to everyone who participates every week on the Money Making Monday thread because we all learn so much from each other. So this is a great resource for learning about what sells. So we're going to start off with D. Found this at the bins, so paid maybe $5. Sold in 10 days for $99 plus shipping. This is a Western Electric Pink Rotary Princess phone. Vintage 60s. And I always wanted this phone except I wanted the push button one. But the princess phones were just so pretty and so feminine and you saw them in a lot of TV shows. So that's kind of my reference for everything <laughs> from the 70s was it was in a TV show and I thought it was cool. But this is one of those items I always wanted. All right, next up is Linda. She says, rescued from items bound for my mom's garage sale. Free to me. Sold for full price in four hours. This is a Fiesta syrup pitcher. So it's a small one. It's not a regular size pitcher. It's just a syrup pitcher. And it's sold for $99 with a chip on the lid. So obviously vintage items are rarely going to be in perfect mint condition. If they were used and well loved, there may be a little issue on there and that's okay. They will sell anyway. Okay, next up is Sherry Isaacs. She says, I listed this and it sold within three hours. I paid $15 for the whole scrapbook. So apparently a scrapbook of vintage memorabilia and this is a ticket stub from 1974 that sold for $99.95. So I know you're like me and you're kicking yourself for throwing away all kinds of memorabilia from back in the day. I didn't go to a whole lot of concerts, but I wished I had saved the ticket stubs to the ones I did go to because they're probably valuable now. Next is Kelly Voiles. Paid $4 at a local thrift store and it sold overnight. This is Funko Pop Television Star Trek Original Series Captain Kirk. And Lynn Marie says... Thanks for sharing this. I always assumed they were just a common toy. I just looked at comps and yowza. <laughs> and Kelly answered with, glad I scanned them. Going to check them all from now on. And I have come across a few of these Funko Pop items. And really the ones I found were only worth like $10. And the thrift store had $5.00. For the price and so obviously that's not a great buy but it's another one of those things where it just depends on which one it is so look those up when you find them next is tammy mitchell she said my son cleaned out his closet took a couple of days to sell took a best offer of a hundred dollars plus shipping 
Virginia says, great sale, but more amazing that your son cleaned out his closet. And Tammy says, my son said he wanted new summer clothes. I told him to clean out his outgrown clothes and we will put that money towards new ones. We ended up having six or seven different listings. So this listing was for 12 Nike, Under Armour, Dry Fit, just a combination of different boys, athletic basketball shorts, and looks like some t-shirts too. And this is exactly how I raised my kids. They are 24 and 27 now, but that's what we did. They would bring me their outgrown clothes and we would put that money towards buying new ones, like new from the store, not new from Goodwill. <laughs> my kids had to, you know, clarify that when they wanted something new because I was always going to Goodwill and finding stuff. And they're like, no, mom, like, you know, new in a store where everything has a tag on it. <laughs> so I guess it's just your frame of reference there. Okay, next up is Cynthia Wilson. She says, from my death pile, these full slips were purchased from a thrift store for a total of about 10 to $15. I rarely pay over $2 for a slip. Sold on seven day auction for $100. Collectors like the colors. This is a vintage lot of five full slips in different colors from the 50s to the 80s. And there was some conversation on this. Summer Welling says, were they all the same size? And then Marie asked, does the brand name matter on the vintage slips? And then Cynthia answered, uh, Summer's question, yes, all of these had labels that dated them from the 60s to the 80s. And she did not take the time to do measurements. So this is probably going to a collector, maybe a wardrobe person that, um, you know, is responsible for building that wardrobe for productions, drama, movie productions, TV, whatever. And they definitely go on eBay to buy props and wardrobe. Next up is Tiffany. Thanks to the Granny Square video tutorial, I grabbed this one at the Goodwill bins last week. Listed for $120, sent an offer to someone for $105, and it was out the door. It was a heavy item, so I paid about $9, meaning at the Goodwill outlet, you pay by the pound. So this was heavy, and she estimates her cost was $9. It sold for $105. This is a Granny Square Afghan crocheted, large size, 98 by 67. And what she's referring to there is my video tutorial about selling granny square afghans this item is definitely on my personal bolo list i have sold several throughout my ebay career and you can just check out that video for more information about what to look for next up is a repeat offender on these 100 dollar supersized videos ken mcnamara he paid $6 for these anthropology teacups and saucers. Two cups, two saucers, sold for $105 in 27 days. I like how precise you are, Ken. Always keep an eye out for anthropology coffee cups. And Ginger asked, do they say anthropology on the bottom? And Ken answered, not always. The anthropology logo is a bird, but sometimes there is no marking at all. Some will only have a name of an artist that does collaborations with anthropology. It's a bit tricky. This particular set, the cups have no marking on the bottom and the saucers still had the anthropology price tags. Six dollars sold for 105 in less than a month. Next up is Julia Clare, $10 estate sale buy, got $120 plus shipping, took about three weeks to sell. This is a vintage 
Mr. Bim, Zip, Zippy, Monkey, Chimpanzee. And I can't see if he's the one that has the symbols that when you turn him on, he bangs them together, or if it's just the plush that doesn't have any moving parts. But either way, $10 sold for $120. Okay, Lisa Acosta paid $23.74 at the flea market, sold for $125 plus shipping in two days. This is a Bing and Grondel Elsie in blue six and a half inch figurine made in Denmark porcelain. So basically a pretty little Danish girl figurine that's about seven inches tall. $23.74 sold for $125 in two days. Rachel Hoffman paid $8 at a local thrift store, sold for $128.50. These are a solo cross-country ski boots. And these are kind of funky looking. It looks like they have just a portion of a ski underneath the boot and you just kind of slide along rather than wearing a full set of skis. So that's a funky item. $8 sold for $128.50. And if you could educate me on this item, if you've ever worn them or used them or seen them, I would love to hear about that. <laughs> this is definitely something we don't see in Georgia. <laughs> okay, Lynette Hubbuck bought at Goodwill for $3.99, sold for asking price in about a month. This is a vintage sewing pattern making system. Sale price was $149.95 and she only paid four bucks for it. Now we've got Rachel Hilst. Paid $5 for this quilt at an estate sale. It sold in a week at auction. Antique crazy quilt block uh, 60 by 60 so it's just a very funky crazy looking quilt five dollars and it sold for right at 150 and only had two bids so these quilts can sell for a lot of money as you can see okay next we've got Ann my husband sold these at Goodwill on his lunch break for twelve dollars sold within a week these are some Danner Camo Gore-Tex hunting boots. $12 sold for $150 in just a week. We've got Tammy Mitchell again. Maybe this video might be called the Tammy Mitchell Show because she's showing up a lot. <laughs> she had a great week. Purchased on Facebook Marketplace for $20. Took three months to sell. Sold for $150 plus shipping. American Girl Pleasant Company Samantha Doll. $20 and it sold for $150. Next up is David Schneider. Bought Vintage Golf Club's Iron Set at Thrift Store for $2.80. Sold on five-day auction for $157.50. And this is a Mizuno set, total nine golf clubs. $2.80 sold for $157.50. And go you, David, and anybody else who does golf clubs because um, they all look the same to me. I would have no idea what to do on those. So good for you if that is in your skill set. Golf clubs are pretty easy to mail. There is a USPS priority box specifically. Well, it's not specifically for golf clubs, but it's a, a tube that uh, they fit in and works perfectly. Okay, Marie Hamilton bought this with my 20% off coupon at Savers for $14.99. Sold in three weeks for full asking price. Vintage White Patchwork Double Wedding Ring Quilt, 104 by 90. 
So obviously the bigger it is, the more it's going to sell for. And this sold for $159. Her investment was $14.99. Oh, and I forgot to share with you guys. I was talking about the um, senior discount at a thrift store I found on one of my podcasts recently. And I went to Goodwill last week on senior day and they gave me the discount. I didn't even ask for it. And I wasn't going to say anything because it was uh, 25% off. But so I have now joined the ranks of senior citizens who get the discount at the thrift store. I've been waiting my whole life for this and it's finally here. Okay, moving on. Eileen Cole bought a lot of 85 Baptist hymnals for $40 advertised on Facebook Marketplace from a local church who got new ones. This batch of 20 were the ones in the best shape and I sold them for $165 plus shipping. They sold in three weeks. $40 turned into 165. Okay, here is a cool item. Shana Hathaway. This is a head vase. I'm sorry, is it Shana or Shanna? I'm not sure, so correct me on that one. Anyway, got her out of a storage unit. Paid $45 for the whole unit. I'm way into all profit on this unit now. She took about six months to sell. Took best offer of $200. And this is a uh, Inarco head vase. And just look at that. That is so vintage. That just says mid-century modern. I'm guessing it's ceramic. Um, that's just a beautiful vintage piece. Sold for $200. And there's some conversation about storage unit auctions. Virginia says, how does that work with the storage unit? Like someone abandoned their stuff and you bought it? And Shanna says, yes. And Virginia says, thanks for posting this. I checked it out before you replied. Never even thought of this as a resource. So yeah, that's a great way to get a whole bunch of stuff at one time are buying out these storage unit auctions and there was like a TV show storage wars where they would bid on different ones and then you don't really get to see what's inside until it's over so it can be it can be kind of risky and kind of a crapshoot but um, it's a way to get a whole bunch of stuff and I've heard some stories about what was inside these units and you know, like, oh, there was some furniture and there was a desk and then the desk was thousands of dollars and just all kinds of stuff like that. So that could be an interesting way to get some inventory. Rose Vickers, $13 at Goodwill, took 15 minutes to sell. This is a vintage crib set uh, with teddy bears and bright pastel colors. And it's all new in the package. So she has on her listing there NOS, which stands for new old stock, meaning it, it's old, but it's still in the package. 15 minutes to sell, $13 investment, sold for $208. Now we've got Andrea. Free to me, sold in about a month for best offer, went to Hungary. This is a vintage space outlaw atomic pistol ray gun. Ooh, I wonder if this is what um, Michael J. Fox used in Back to the Future in that scene with the ray gun when he's trying to freak out the guy and <laughs> acting like he's from outer space. That just popped into my head. It's just like a stream of consciousness sometimes doing these videos, the things that pop into my head. Anyway, this was free and it sold for $240 and went international. Now we've got Lori Farmer, paid $3 plus tax at Salvation Army, listed about a week, went internationally. This is a connection cable. It's just a cord for something. Samsung 
a whole bunch of numbers, one invisible connection cable. $3 and it sold for $250. So all you people out there who are pack rats and have just a whole bunch of cords from things, check them out. I mean, somebody somewhere could just be sitting there waiting for you to list it because they have an older or vintage or no longer made electronic thing and they can't find a cord for it. And trust me, these companies make these cords all different by design. That's on purpose. Um, like Apple, every time they come out with a new phone, practically, it seems like you need a different charger because the old one won't fit in the new phone. So that's all on purpose. But um, you pack rat people who keep <laughs> cords. <laughs> um, I've seen this, just drawers and boxes of cords from things. They could be very valuable. Here's a perfect example. Tammy Burke bought from a local online auction for $60. Took about one week to sell for full asking price. Sat in my death pile for four months. I had several watchers right away. I raised the asking price by $10 and sold it later that day. This is a Nashika camera with carrying case. $259.95. And that is a great strategy when you have a lot of interest in an item, but nobody's taking action, raise the price. Because if you lower the price, they're just going to wait for you to lower it some more. But if you raise the price and they're watching and they get a notification, they may be like, oh, I better buy this because the price might go up even more. And right now in the times of COVID, that happens. There's certain things that I order on Amazon every month for my business and the prices fluctuate all the time. So it could be a production issue. Um, look at what happened with the Suez Canal and all those ships that got stuck behind that blockage. Um, a lot of things are stuck in distribution and when that happens, prices can go up. The less there is of something, the more it's worth. So you can absolutely raise the price on your items when you have a lot of interest, and that is a great strategy. Julia Marchinko purchased for $25 from local consignment shop, sold to Belgium with best offer of $290 after one month. And she has her cute daughter modeling these fun boots. These are rare Rick Owens black leather knee boots. $25 sold for $290. And we've had like three in a row here that were high dollar sales that went internationally. So all you folks out there that are not shipping internationally, you are leaving money on the table. It's time to get up to speed and start shipping internationally so you can make more money. That's the one thing you can do that requires no extra effort. You just go put it on all your listings and start selling to people all over the world and make more money. It's really easy. Shannon Matson, I mentioned the inflatables haul I just got this past weekend. This one was from a Goodwill Bins inflatable haul from January. Most were small and I sold locally and pretty quickly. This one was the largest and rarest of that haul. Took a best offer after three and a half months for $299. So look at this. Uh, 16 and a half foot Santa and reindeer animated Christmas inflatable. Sold for $300 in the middle of April. If this doesn't make a believer out of you that Christmas sells all year, I mean, nothing will. Anything can sell anytime. Okay, next we've got uh, Mayra, grabbed at an estate sale for a couple of dollars, listed as auction starting at 90 because I didn't see the same bunny listed or sold. This is a 
Holly Royal Orleans Watership Down Rabbit Figurine. I loved those books, Watership Down. Anyway, this sold for $306.50 for a ceramic figurine. Okay, the next one is me. <laughs> I've had this item almost a year and it finally sold for full price. This is a uh, 925 Sterling Silver Jeff Deegan Double Alligator Belt Buckle Set. This was a very unusual item. And I actually made a video about when I found this, but um, it was attached to an ostrich skin belt, which I still have listed. So I separated it, but this was 75 cents at Goodwill. It was actually on the sale color, meaning it had been in the store five weeks and nobody picked it up. And it was all the way on the back of the belt rack. Like uh, they hang them on these hooks. So you have to, you know, they're all in front of each other. And I looked through those. So it was $2.99 and then it was half price. And then I split the item into two different listings, the belt and the hardware. Anyway, so my investment was 75 cents, sold for $374.97, full asking price. So yes, Goodwill misses things. This was just out on the sales floor. It wasn't behind the jewelry counter. It wasn't marked up. And brand new, this hardware is like $1,200. So this was one of my best sales of all time. But patience is a virtue. It did take almost a year to sell, but I knew the right person would come along and just to be patient. Oh, and look who we have again, Tammy Mitchell. See, I told you this should be called the Tammy Mitchell Show. <laughs> Purchased on Facebook Marketplace for $62.50, took four months to sell. Sold for $375 plus shipping. This is a Harley Davidson Men's Willie G Limited Edition Leather Jacket, size 2X. So initial investment, $62.50, sold for $375. Now we've got Danielle Kelly. Paid $35, sold on 7-day auction. This is a Coleman 200 Lantern, vintage 1951, with uh, the red top. $35, and it sold for $393. Excellent. Okay, Lisa Acosta. Free from a thrift store that lets you pick a free book with your purchase. <laughs> I like that marketing gimmick because that helps them get rid of their books. Um that's pretty smart. Anyway, this is the Guns of Dagenham Collector Grade Publications Hardcover Book with Dust Jacket. Okay, I don't even know what any of that means, but she sold it for $395 and it was free. So there's some conversation about this. Amy said, whoa, did you know what it was when you picked it out? I am never good with books. And Lisa said, nope, I actually pass on taking a free book at this thrift store because I don't want to spend the time. This time I just gave myself about two minutes to grab the most obscure book I could find. Left it in my car for a couple of months, piled stuff on top of it, finally remembered to look it up and almost passed out. <laughs> That's pretty funny that you had it in your car the whole time, Lisa, and just... Didn't even know it was worth anything. I love it. Next is Diana Tate. Paid $4 at Salvation Army. Sold for $399 plus shipping. Listed in February 2021 and sold in April. Always check the bottom shelf under the junk. This is a vintage ship's wheel. 18 inch. $4 sold for $399. Okay, Susan Hirschberger. My husband spotted this fabric at an estate sale a couple of years ago and recognized 
pals vitamins from childhood. Paid $10. It sat until five days ago when he listed it as an auction. Apparently, a few other folks remember it too. I think I remember those. Or those yummy little chewable vitamins are like candy. <laughs> this sold for $455.25 and it cost them $10. Okay, and now for our cover photo sale. This is Amy Decker, free from Facebook Marketplace. Took about half an hour to dig through the bin and pull out what I thought went with the ponies. Sold within five minutes or so for full asking price plus shipping. I also separated a few others and have made almost another $100 on those so far. Who would ever think? Good question. Uh, huge lot, My Little Pony, vintage accessories. $499 for a whole bunch of little plastic things. I mean, we have Pee Wee Herman selling for $150. We've got Little Pony selling for $500. I mean, gold and silver aren't worth anything anymore. It's, it's all plastic stuff. <laughs> it's just... Um, after all these years of doing eBay, it, this is just astonishing to me every time when I see stuff like this because it's just, it's all out there and it's available to anybody who wants to go look for it. You know, no barriers to entry. You can just go out there and find stuff and sell it and make money and your life is better. Um, so congratulations on that, Amy. All right, Ginger Lampbright. Bought this a week ago at a community garage sale for $10. I listed it right after dinner tonight, and it sold for full asking price of $499.99, plus shipping in about 15 minutes. This is a Suzuki Omnicord system. I don't know what that is. Some kind of musical thing? I'm not even sure exactly what this product is, but Ginger... Sold it for five hundred dollars. <laughs> so I think Ginger should buy us all a coffee and tell us about this product because I don't even know what it is. Okay, next up is Faith Dixon. Paid three ninety nine at Goodwill. Sold on best offer of five hundred and twenty five dollars. This is a Ray Dunn vintage teapot. I mean, just look at that. It looks so plain. Um, if you don't know what Ray Dunn is, I guess maybe I need to do a brand spotlight on that one. But some of the stuff is worth nothing. And then you've got stuff like this that's selling for over $500. Just, it's just mind-blowing. And finally, we've got Faith Enriquez. Paid $6 at a local thrift shop. Took a best offer of $750. Took about six months to sell. 1920s French Impressionist Falvest painting after Raoul Duffy sailboat regatta. Okay, that's a lot that I don't even know what those words are. But um, <laughs> anyway, Faith did. She at least looked it up and figured it out. So $6 sold for $750. Wow, this, these sales are just just crazy and just amazing and I love making these videos because I learned so much so if you have stuck with me to the end please give this video a like so I will know that you want more of this because I want to give you all what you want and so the only way I can determine what you want is by the analytics the number of views and the number of likes thanks again for watching and have a profitable and productive day on eBay. Bye.